Welcome to this fourth and final video involving notes about the converse of transversal results. In this video we will look at the one example on the screen. We need to solve for the values of x and y as well as the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 9 with this picture. One of the first things we notice is that we're given some parallel lines. In this problem we are given that lines M and N are parallel. Additionally, let's label the angles that we know we're working with in the picture. We have angle 1, angle 16, angle 7, and angle 10. So the first part of this problem is we need to set up two valid equations that involve some combination of angles 1, 7, 16, and 10. So just like some of the previous notes problems we looked at, let's identify one transversal at a time. In this case, let's begin with transversal P. Please indicate that we are looking at transversal P when writing out the geometry of the equation. Our two angles involved are angles 1 and 7. Now please note that angle 1 would be congruent to angle 5 because angles 1 and 5 are corresponding angles formed by parallel lines. So essentially this angle 5 is really the same thing as an angle 1, therefore we will have that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 7 is equal to 180 degrees. But now we have some algebra, so let's plug in the algebra. The measure of angle 1 is 8x plus y minus 14. The measure of angle 7 is 2x plus 27y plus 23. And those two angles add up to 180 degrees. Be careful when combining like terms. Looks like we have 10x's plus 28y and then 14 plus 23, negative 14 plus 23 would be a plus 9 equals 180. So overall our equation here would be 10x plus 28y is equal to 171. So now let's look at our other transversal, specifically transversal Q. Again on a quiz, an assignment, or a test, please specify that we are looking at transversal Q when writing out the geometry of the second equation. The two angles formed at transversal Q are angles 16 and 10 that we're working with. Those are alternate exterior angles. They're formed by parallel lines, so their measures have to be equal. The measure of angle 10 is equal to the measure of angle 16. We can now fill in the algebra of the problem so 57y minus 2x plus 24 is equal to 6x plus 12y plus 22. I prefer to have the number attached to the x positive. So let's add 2x to both sides. We'll have 8x. We'll subtract 57y from both sides, which will leave us with a minus 45y. And then we'll subtract 22 from both sides and we'll get 2. Well now, by the symmetric property of equations, we can switch those sides and we'll have 8x minus 45y equals 2. And at this point we could set up our system of equations. 10x plus 28y equals 171 and 8x minus 45y is equal to 2. So now as we go to solve this equation we can multiply the top equation by 4 gives us 40 and we can multiply the bottom equation by negative 5 which would also build a 40. Now be careful everything in that first equation gets multiplied by 4. 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 28 will be plus 112y and 4 times 171 is 684. On the second equation we would have negative 40x 
and then a negative 5 times a negative 45 would be plus 225y is equal to a negative 10. We will add those two equations up. The x's cancel. 40 plus a negative 40 is 0. We will have 337y is equal to 674. And if we take 674 divided by 337, we'll solve for y. And it looks like y is just equal to 2. Okay, so now we have y. Let's plug back into either equation to solve for x. Let's plug into the second equation. We'll have 8x minus 45 times 2 is equal to 2. So 8x minus 90 equals 2. 8x would be equal to 92. And 92 divided by 8 will get us that x is equal to 11.5. In this case, it's just 0.5. It would be fine to express that answer as a decimal with 11.5. So now let's return to our original problem in order to see what else we have to find. We have that x is 11.5. We have that y is 2. And we need to solve for the measure of angle 3 as well as the measure of angle 9. Well, in order to get the measure of angle 3, we can calculate the measure of angle 1. So let's do that over here on the side. The measure of angle 1 would be 8 times 11.5, please show the plug-in, plus 2 minus 14. So we'll just calculate that, 8 times 11.5 plus 2 minus 14. The measure of angle 1 is 80 degrees. So the measure of angle 3 is 180 minus 80, which would be 100 degrees. Measure of angle 3 is 100 degrees. And we also need the measure of angle 9. To get the measure of angle 9, we can calculate the measure of angle 10 and then subtract it from 180. So let's just come over here on the left-hand side and we'll say the measure of angle 10 is equal to 57 times 2 minus 2 times 11.5 plus 24. So when we calculate that out, 57 times 2 minus 2 times 11.5 plus 24. We get that the measure of angle 10 is 115. Therefore, the measure of angle 9 would be 180 minus 115, which should just be 65 degrees. Overall, the key thing, when we set up the equations, name the transversal, say the geometry of the equation, and then get the equation. Name the transversal, say the geometry of the equation, and then get the equation. Once we have two equations, we'll go to the system of equations in order to solve for x and y. And then once we have the values of x and y, we can plug it in to find whatever else we need to calculate.